the sun's out right now. I don't know how long it's going to last. According to the radar, we got another big storm from rolling in. Supposed to be here around 11 or so. So, might only get a couple of hours of fishing, but it's better than sitting at the house. Good thing, I came out yesterday evening and caught my bait, so I'll have to do that this morning. It wasn't a real, real large shad, but uh, a lot of small shad. One of them died, you can see, but that's about the size shad we were catching. They're, again, they're real small, but they still work. All right, so we just got the baits in the water. Uh, fishing a little hump here is what we're fishing. The lake's up. Uh, about 10 foot right now the normal pool so it's making things a little bit more challenging in some areas where we normally stake anchor and things like that so using mainly just the trolling motor spot lock to hold us and uh, we'll see how it see how it works here uh, it may have to drift but I don't know if you can see but I think the storm is is moving in a little quicker than we thought real dark back there for bait again we're using shad um i got a variety of stuff the right pole is a, just one piece of small shad the middle pole is a live shad and the left pole still using small shad but i've, I've doubled them up to make a larger piece of shad so same way on this one small. so we'll sit here for a little bit see how it goes we might get run off the lake anyways see what this storm's gonna do if it's just rain, I don't mind it, but if it's got lightning and a lot of heavy winds, then we'll get off the lake. Stay tuned. Guys, we got a roll. Uh, just take a look at this radar again, and it's just building and building, getting worse and worse. So we're gonna get off the lake, and if this blows through, we'll come back and get back after them. So well, we made it back. Got a little wet, but uh, I think we beat the main part of the storm. We made it back safe. That's all that matters. And uh, if we can, this thing will blow through. We'll go back and get back after them. So. If not, we'll do it another day. See you later. Hey, y'all. Well, things has drastically changed since I left you guys. As you've seen, we left, came back to the lake, and... Uh, pulled in this pocket and there's just shad galore and they're big shad and just got the poles in the water well I ain't got I guess I got two two poles in the water I only have two in the water and I already caught a nice eating fish so we're gonna keep a few today for supper and then uh, get out of here for tomorrow's trip another fish on again this is the second pole out this feels like a better fish was pulling a little bit of drag before I could get the camera turned on. I just turned the camera off. Put the fish in the live well and turned some some water on and this rod went down. I think it's gonna be a slot fish. We'll see. about that nice fish right at 32 inches so, trimming 26 to 34 they got to go back over 34 you can keep I think two now but I don't keep them if they're over 34 anyway I let them let them go back so we'll put this one back in I don't know if you can see it or not you see them dark spots out there on the water that's all them big old shad. 
that's what them fish are in here eating on so i'll show you i'll show you one that's the size shed that are out there all right let's see if we can get these poles back out see if we can get y'all a take down on film Fast action. Three fish at once. Get this one in a little. Boy, oh, like a good one too. Get this one in out of the way from the trees over there. Shouldn't have tried to lift him like that. In a hurry. Let's see what's going on here. Nothing. All right. Let's see if we can get a couple of these in the boat. Things first. Let's get the net out. This morning, guide trip canceled because of the rain. I understand. Got kids and stuff, I get it. We kind of waited it out. Oh. Paid off. Nice slot fish. Put him back. That was on a pink and white demon dragon. Of course, we're using slime line. In my opinion, it's the best, best monofilament line on the market, hands down. I've been with them for years. They first come out. Now they even make an orange color. It's pretty neat. I still like the green. was just then I'm only gonna put four out. That should be more than enough. I think we got him. Just a small one. Swimming at the boat. Good, and that old bayou cooker. So, peanut oil. Oh, we got another fish. Another fish. 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 Got it. Keep just playing with it. Get any better right here. 
got slammed. Let's see if he comes back. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Like a big old male, real dark color. Said I cut up one shad. I'm not gonna cut up anymore. I'm gonna finish using what I got. But, uh, got maybe two or three pieces left. Then I'm getting out of here. As stale cracker would say, that's money, dude. For those who don't know stale cracker, up on YouTube or TikTok, whatever social platform you do. He's a Cajun from down south. Does a lot of good cooking. Crawfish and shrimp. Stuff like that. Good. Speaking of actually fixed to take a break for about two weeks we're taking the family to Panama City Beach and we're gonna spend about a week there and then we're gonna end up in New Orleans I've got a uh, cabin book on the bayou you can only get to it by boat so plan on taking a GoPro with me and other camera do some filming while we're there too so we'll do a couple fishing trips while we're there you'll we'll get to come with us there was a went to throw this one back out and there was a fish on it he was a big one full drag and took off broke me off. Look at there. He was pulling drag and snapped it. Could have been frayed, I don't know, but that's 50 pound. Leader line. Snapped it like it wasn't nothing. I'm not gonna cut no more up, so. on this one didn't even know it lining went slack another little leader Down to 
one pole. Look over here, man. It's kind of windy. Obviously, these fish are in here feeding on these shad. But, uh, they're, I mean, they're just, there's schools of them every, everywhere. I don't know if you've seen us at the kids. I'm basically targeting these fish that I think are hanging out in this brush and stuff. As these shad come by, they're just ambushing them. I'm sure there's also fish underneath them coming up feeding too, but my theory anyway. I said one more, but let's go one more. Well, my battery died at the worst moment. But we got him in the boat. That's what I wanted to end on right there. Head on him. Nice fish. Again, I ain't got my scales. He's a legal fish to keep. 35, we ain't gonna keep him. We'll get a couple pictures and then let him loose. Put him in this live well just for a minute to revive him. Then we're gonna let him loose. Hey, pictures are done. Time to put him back for one of you clients to come fish with me to catch. Or maybe you come to Truman Lake on your own. Maybe you'll catch him. So here he goes. Wow. What a day, y'all. Put several fish in the boat in a short time. We got out here, oh, I don't know, 1230 maybe. We didn't start fishing until I'd say one or so, 230 now. So hour, hour and a half tops, a lot of fish in the boat, some big fish, some nice eaters too, so. Come with us home, back to the lodge. What we call is the roost. We'll clean some of these up, get them prepared, and cook them for you tonight, so. Well, we made it back. Get these fish out of this live well and get them cleaned up, ready for supper. I don't know how many we kept. I think maybe five, maybe six, I don't know. We caught, gosh, I don't even keep track how many we caught. I'm gonna guess maybe 12 or so. Nice fish. Right. Keep what you're gonna eat and then throw the rest back. No sense. I suppose you're allowed to keep. Ten. Don't mean you have to. It's actually kind of getting low, the fish in the freezer. So, so give me a mess to eat tonight, and have another couple messes to eat on as well. Let's see. One, two, 
three, four, I think that is, five, I could, we kept five. Good deal. All right, let's take these over to the cleaning table. I'll show you how I clean them. Now, if these were a bit, little bit bigger, eating fish, or maybe it's an over that the clients wanted to keep, we would do what we call bleed them. These are smaller fish. I don't think you really need to. But to bleed them, what you'll do is, it's a bit lively. Let's cut that tail off and then let's hang him up. We've got some hooks out there we use. Let's hang him up for 10 minutes or so. And that'll get a lot of that blood out of him. I'll, uh, I'll cut this one's tail off real quick just to kind of show you. It'll have quite a bit of blood in him. Find my whacker first, put him out of misery. People on YouTube, they uh, they frown upon things like that, so my whacker. Anyway, whack his tail off. Just look at that blood pour out of That's that bloodline. What's crucial especially those bigger fish, to bleed them. Like I said, he wouldn't, he ain't too bad. Probably wouldn't have to, to bleed him. Let me put the rest of these out of misery. So them lovely people on YouTube are happy and then other social sites. And I'll come back to you. Okay. I went ahead and got all them put out of their misery. And I went ahead and whacked her tails off anyway, so they're all should be good and bled by now. Give them a few minutes here. Let's start with kind of this smaller one first. I'm going to show you what we do. If you rinse him off, you get a lot of that slime off. You kind of hold on to the fish a lot better. Now you could use gloves or something, that would work too, but I just always do that. And uh, so again, we've already cut his tail off. You'll do is just kind of go right behind the head there. Take that lay knife sideways and go right down the backbone. And just go ahead and fillet it plumb off. That's our first step. Now look at that fillet. Pretty white meat. Oh, it's gonna be good. Flip him over to the same thing on the other side. Now, a lot of people will just be done there, throw him away. But even on these small fish, there's a lot of meat that you miss sometimes, especially with an electric knife, right behind the head. I call it head meat. You take that knife, put it on that backbone, kind of flick it a little bit, turn it. Look at there. It's good meat that was just going to get wasted. Put him in the pile. Now these small ones, I don't mess with the belly meat. The biggest one in here, I'll show you what, if you don't know what belly meat is, I'll show you what that's all about. But let me get the rest of this head meat out. Some people think, why well, mess with it? Well, the good Lord put it on there for us. Let's get it off. Makes a nice little cruncher while we wait for the main course. What I do next, there's still a little bit of rib meat right in here. You can see it or not. And in that rib meat, there's some bones. We want to get them out. Again, take your knife, go down, then turn it away. That's going to peel them rib meat right out. So from here, hold on to that skin, that rib meat skin, just like filleting a crappie or anything else. Right along the edge. Perfect fillet. Now, some people cook it just like that. Now, if you're cooking it on the grill or blackstone, that'd be that'd be how I'd do it. But I grew up in the South, 
And if we're going to fry fish, let me show you how I do it. Now, is it the right way? Maybe, maybe not. It's, it's the way I grew up eating fish. Some people cut it up in nuggets, and that's fine too, but let me show you how I do it. First of all, a small one like this, you can just come right down the middle. Little fillets like that. Now, if you go down south in any kind of catfish house, on the on the buff they have catfish buffets or even on the menu, you order catfish. That's what you're gonna get. Some people think, well, that's a small fish. No, it was a big fish, or it could have been a nice fish. That's just how they prepare them. Perfect fillets, they fry up nice and crispy. They're just right. Perfect fillets. Work the rest of these up for you. Now, this one's just a little bit bigger. It's got some belly meat on it. We'll go ahead and get off and show you what that's all about. This is how, again, how I do it. You might do it differently. Again, it's how I do it. These back two fins, take your knife, again, your electric knife, go right by this side of them towards the head. Let's go to reveal the guts. I'm right below the gill plate. Same way. Just work it around. Get all this belly out. Now, watch what we do with this. Clean us off a little bit here. Lay that side. Lay that side. That takes one the bottom skin off. You got a little bit of top skin. Now I do it. I start right in the middle. A good piece of fillet. Go down to hit the skin. Lay it off. That's some of the best eating fish that you can get on a blue cat. And so many people throw it away. I mean, look at the size of that. That's a quarter of its belly. All right, we're back inside now and got a nice good shower and uh, got these fish worked up. I wanted to show you um, what we had here. I've got, of course, I think there's six or seven fillets there for, for me for supper tonight. Again, it's, it's just me here. The kids and the wife are home and then dad and mom are out of town. So it's just me. And uh, I packaged up three bags for the freezer. Again, five fish is all we kept. And these bags have like 25 fillets a piece in them. Uh, perfect for me and the kids, a meal. Uh, my wife don't eat, she don't eat fish, so I never really cook her a piece of chicken or something to go along with it. But uh, the kids and I love it. And so there's, there's three meals for us. And then I got a meal for tonight by myself. So four meals total off of just five fish. Again, keep what you eat, release the rest. Stay tuned, we're fixing to cook these jokers. Now while we wait for the cooker to get heated up, I'm gonna go ahead and make my sauce that I like to dip my fish in. Uh, some of you may kind of use this kind of recipe already. If you don't, uh, if you like a little bit of a kick, really, really good. So start off a little bit of horseradish. This is prepared horseradish, a little dollop. Again, it's just me tonight, so I'm making enough just for me. This is tartar sauce. If you don't like it as spicy, leave the horseradish out, but I like, I like spicy. So, a couple little squirts of tartar sauce. Again, it's just me here. My daughter, she uh, she likes this. She doesn't put the, the horseradish in it or Tony's, which we'll add here in just a minute. She just does tartar sauce and this is just Frank's Red Hot. Just pour a little bit of that in there. And I add a little bit of Tony's. 
Good old Creole seasoning. Hard to beat. Been around a long time. Give that a whisk. A little bit more tartar. And there's our dipping sauce for the fish. Mm -hmm. Money. Okay, so first what I like to do is we have our, uh, we got our sauce made up. Now what I want to do is get these fillets out and get them good and dry. Get all that moisture, all that water off of them. Get you a couple paper towels and just set them on, on there. Got me seven fillets to eat tonight. All right, let's get rid of this water. <clears throat> We're gonna use this pan again here in just a minute, so go ahead and dry it out real quick. Now, just pat, pat down them fillets and get all that water out of there. Next, come back with some Tony's right on top. Man, if you don't like spicy, don't put it in there. I do. This ain't real spicy. Just a Creole seasoning. It's the original form. Flip your filet over. Go the other side. That way, when we bread them, you just put this in with your breading. Yeah, you might get a little bit of it on there, but most of it, it really is gonna cook off. You're not gonna really taste it. Whereas if you go ahead and season your filet first and then bread it, see I'm kind of just patting this down in there, and then you bread it, well this is inside the breading. So when it cooks, you're gonna to get to taste this good old Creole come through. All right, now for our breading. Pretty simple. Plain old yellow cornmeal, plain flour. Dump you a little bit in there. A little bit of flour. Get you a fork or something. Mix this up. And that's it for your, your batter. Really simple. Let's get these battered up. Now, we're just going to go ahead and just lay these on top here. I'm not going to fully batter them quite yet. Still got to cook some fries. I want to fully batter them at the very last minute. Before we cook them. Just gonna set them in there and kind of get them ready. All right, let's go check on that grease. Okay, our temperature's just about right. We can go ahead and probably put our fries in, get them cooking. Put some steak fries. Too long. Start floating, they're done. I don't like much, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of give this a toss. Again, you don't need no egg, you don't need none of that junk. Pat them flays good and dry. Give them a toss. Just gonna give just a nice light. Thin batter, crust, wherever. Perfect. Remember, I'm not using them great big old fillets. I'm using them southern fillets. Fries are done. 
a little almost too done. But that's all right. Now, immediately, we'll cook these fish now. Won't take long. Shake it off a little bit. Drop it in that grease. It's gonna be good. Can't get any fresher than this. Look, our fish is done. All right. Same way. Get it with that salt. Yeah, I'll probably die of cholesterol, but it'll be all right. Turn that cooker off. Let's go in and eat them. All right, let's plate these up. Need that salt no more. Just a little, use my fingers, it's just me. Fish. That looked good. Mm. We pray and let's try bite here. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, uh, for having a day that kind of started off a little rough, but it turned out to be a okay. And uh, I give you the praise for that. Thank you, Lord, for this fish, providing it for us, Lord, and getting to enjoy it on the water as well as on the dinner plate. So thank you, God. I ask you, Lord, just to bless it, Father, now and strengthen and nourish our bodies. And uh, we ask all this in your name, Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, ain't nothing else to do except dive in. I'm going to try a piece without anything first just to see what it tastes like. Mmm. 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 Hot, but good. You don't need nothing. Mm. But since I made it, I'm gonna go ahead and dip it anyway. Mm. Mm -mm. That's where it's at. Perfect amount of heat. Again, I like the heat, so it's good. Hope you enjoyed today's footage. Uh, it was a blast. Had a had a great time. So. Uh, Thank you again for watching. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.